Now, first show I did not enjoy. No. A bad show. Yes. So not even beginning to do it justice. WCW Monday Nitro 241, May 1st of the year 2000. In the running for the worst Nitros I've ever seen. I'm so happy. Because I was watching this thing in the same thing, and I thought maybe I'm just having a bad day. Or I'm, 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 I was having I'm a bad biased. day because I watched it. Okay, so <laughs> we're in agreement. This is a terrible, terrible yes. show. Oh, fucking good. wretched. So, yes, David Arquette is now the world champion, which we'll get into shortly here. But we open with a clip of David visiting his wife, Courtney Cox, on the set of her new movie, 3,000 Miles uh, to Graceland. Mm -hmm. They plugged about 18 times. Okay. So he's got this wacky suit on, he's got his championship belt on, and he's celebrating, and she's pleading with him, you are not a wrestler, you're going to die, please stop doing this. Much like his family does now. Actually, yeah. So we get clips from Thunder, which were bewildering. But Thunder. I Thunder. I not so a pay-per-view. No. Thursday Night Thunder, or Wednesday, or whatever it was. Uh, it. Be bewildering clip here, but I shall do my best to make sense of it all. Jarrett books a tag match. Vampiro and Mike Awesome attack Sting. Vince Russo declares that Liz does not have a contract with Lex Luger. She has a contract with WCW, even though I recall a specific angle where Lex went to Vince in his office yes. and said, I will hire her. She won't work with you. She'll work with me. Yes. She was property of Lex Luger. Yes. And then they do a tag match where it's Paige and Arquette versus Jarrett and Bischoff, where Paige, the reigning world heavyweight champion, can lose the title if anybody else in the match pins anyone else in the match. So when David Arquette right. pins Eric Bischoff, that means Arquette wins the world title. Paige loses the world title, but Paige still celebrates with David Arquette. Belt stayed in the family, baby. I, I guess so. It's a Shane McMahon theory. It doesn't I, matter who wins it as long as it's in the family. I hadn't thought mm. of it that way. Yes, now you have. But yes, that's really stupid. That's fucking... It's, it's, it's honestly stupider that Paige was happy about it than, than it happened. So, Paige and his crew and Jared and his crew, their limos almost collide in the parking lot. They jump out and yell at each other. Hulk Hogan zooms in in his car, smashes it into one of the other cars, and a giant brawl breaks out. There was so much going on here, I couldn't even start to recap it. Like, five things happen in ten seconds. We begin with the bullshit. Crowbar versus Norman Smiley. Actually, before that, Tony is pushing hard that David Arquette is the champion. And Mark Mann says... Former greats are rolling over in their graves. Yes. Including, he says, Bruno Sammartino, who wait, was wait definitely second. not dead. Well. <laughs> Got a ton of heat for that, if I recall correctly. There is that. And this man from Pittsburgh, too? Yes. Shouldn't he know? <laughs> Regardless. So the gimmick is Norman Smiley and a mystery partner are facing Terry Funk at the pay-per-view. So Norman comes out with his mystery partner. Do you know who this is? No, and I don't care. But you should care. All right. It's fucking Ralphus. Oh, dandy. Uh, They've decided that he is literally going to come back and be Norman's partner. He can't work. No. He's not a wrestler. No. They have this big fat guy in this mascot head. He comes out in the mascot suit of the local hockey team, I think. And the first thing he does is get the mascot head stuck in the ropes. Okay, listen. It's a funny visual for like... Two seconds in a man's lifetime. Sure. This guy's wearing a mascot head. Mm -hmm. It gets stuck between the top and the middle rope. He's stuck. Okay. I don't watch sports. What? But even I know. The mascot head just goes on and off. Sure. This is not really a giant dog, whatever the hell this thing was. <laughs> this asshole <laughs> has to pretend like he can't get his head out from between the top and middle rope. Yes. Okay. He can't pull his own head out of the mascot head. Right. Okay. He can't pull his head out. You're right. That's really stupid. And it insults my intelligence as a viewer to believe this man can't move and can't free himself for upwards of five minutes that he's stuck in the ropes. Yep. He's I agree. There forever. Yeah. Now, when he finally frees himself. <laughs> I'm not even ready to get there yet. Okay. I'll wait till you get there. He has his fucking head stuck between the top and the middle rope. And they start doing a goddamn hardcore match. Yeah. And they're wrestling, and this fucking guy's got his head caught between the top and the middle rope. Mm -hmm. He can't get his head out of the mascot head. Right. Nor can he get the mascot head out from between the ropes. And they wrestle. And they wrestle. 
and no one's paying any attention to it because there's a fucking guy, a fat guy, with his head stuck between the top and the middle rope. Mm -hmm. They build to the big spot. A triple big wiggle. Yeah. So what I was watching on my television was, there's a fat guy with a mascot head stuck between the top and the middle rope. There's another guy behind him. Yeah. I don't know how to describe this without being lewd. Pelvis to pelvis. It's not pelvis to pelvis. It's pelvis to ass. Yes. And then there's a guy behind him. Which is where? Madly humping the first guy, causing him to madly hump the guy wearing a mascot head stuck between the top and the middle rope. We got a, a, a daisy chain with a furry here in the opening segment. Thank you. Somehow, this resulted in his head being dislodged. I see. Which maybe, you know, maybe that is realistic. Well, Brian. So finally, he gets his fucking head out. Yeah. And he stands there. Ah. He just stands He can there. barely do that. Now that I know it for Alphys, it all makes more sense, at least. <laughs> so then Crowbar decides, this is the tag team partner of the man I'm fighting. I must also attack him as well. Mm-hmm. What ensues is, no joke, the worst 30 seconds of action I've seen on Nitro all year. Then he just put up air quotes. But I did. I did for the his cameras here. I know, but so, everybody has cameras. They he, should. He throws a kick at the gut. This first of all, it's a big giant gut anyway, and you know, okay, f- fat is padding. You you can kick a guy in the gut; it won't hurt him. As, you know, don't don't punt him, but you can make contact. He won't die. Then he's got a mascot suit on top of that. Mm-hmm. So Crowbar throws this kick. It comes out like three inches short. The mascot doesn't move. Crowbar throws like a T-shirt or something. He he tries to blind the big giant fake mascot head eyes on top, which aren't what the guy's actual eyes are because he's a human being and a head. He takes a kendo stick, hits the mascot head and the head with it, but the mascot head's a big fucking padded helmet thing, so it doesn't sell. I, I, I'm alone in my living room watching this, and I scream, what am I watching? What's going on? Why did they leave his head in the ropes? I was so much happier when his head was stuck in the ropes. Can we talk about the finish? If you want to. I will I will read what I wrote down, because I, I was so sickened that I couldn't even bear to describe it. I remember what happened. What I wrote was... Norman trips over his own partner and wins anyway. I'm done. The mascot falls down. Norman trips over the mascot. And somehow in tripping, he turns it into a cradle on crowbar for the pin. Yeah. I wrote, Vinny, fuck, like, 2000. This was one of the worst matches I have ever seen in my life. It was horrible. And the crowd, they were so hot when the show started, and they were so dead at the end of this match. This fucking killed them. Horrible. And it was not short. We mentioned this was like at least seven minutes. I don't know about that, but fuck. Oh, it was. We are then told that Wednesday night when David Arquette won the world championship was a great moment in sports entertainment. David Arquette arrives with Paige and uh, Canyon. He says he does not deserve to be world champion. Paige promises they will take care of it. Bischoff and... Jarrett and that crew arrive. Kimberly flashes her shirt, which just says me in giant letters. Flair and Lex have a pep talk. We're back on the movie set where Courtney again tells David. <laughs> this was awesome. David, this is dangerous. This is almost as good as the sports guys on the last show. They're back there, and Arquette's explaining to Courtney Cox, this was apparently taped earlier, that he's got guys who are going to watch his back. And who should fucking walk up but Kurt Russell? Yeah. And Kurt Russell walks up, and he just goes, Courtney, we gotta go. We gotta go to the love scene again. It's time for our nude love scene. Mm-hmm. Our catch just stands there like an idiot. And as they're about to leave, I don't know if it's Courtney or David, but somebody explained to Kurt Russell that David Arquette was the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. And Kurt Russell looks at him and he fucking breaks in hysterics and he leaves with Courtney Cox to do a nude love scene. <laughs> Kurt Russell was the star of the show. <laughs> yeah. He was fucking phenomenal. He was so good here. I loved it. Every second of this. Sean Stasiak is in a basketball gym with some god-awful audio. He says he is the perfect one. He is going to break the world record for most consecutive free throws without a miss. He cuts this promo, and he hits this shot, and I thought to myself, thank God. More to come. So Arquette, Paige, and Canyon come out. And Arquette says, Last week has been incredible. Thank you, fans, for all your support. But I am an entertainer, 
not a sports entertainer. So I am going to relinquish this title. And as he's listing all the other talent, maybe Dallas Page deserves it. Maybe uh, Kane deserves it. Maybe Booker T deserves it. Ah, oh, foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. He says he'll put the title up between the Jeff Jarrett Dallas Page Triple Cage match of Slambury. The winner of that will be the new champion. They all start to leave, but then Jarrett and crew interrupt. Bischoff says, you're not going to get off that easy, Mr. Arquette. You were right. You made a mistake getting involved in this. I am making that cage match a three-way. You will defend the title now against Dallas Page and Jeff Jarrett in the triple cage match. Now, I need to explain. After announcing that he owned Liz contractually on Thunder, apparently Vince Russo kidnapped her and put her on, as they called it, a leash. Yeah, she's handcuffed to him. She's handcuffed. It is to a leash. He's got a leash in his hand. Yes. And uh, it's on her wrist, and she can't go anywhere without him. So, in the middle of this, Lex Luger comes charging down to ringside to rescue Liz. Uh, I guess Russo let go, or he left. I'm not sure which, but uh, Liz and the security guys watching her all flee through the crowd. Security flees with them. Lex has to pretend he can't catch them, even though he's already there. They, they all go through the crowd. Now, let's think about this. A woman has been kidnapped. This is all, by the way, in the middle of the segment we're discussing. Yeah, this yes. Is all- this is not a second segment. No. They're in the ring talking about DDP and Jared and Arquette when all of a sudden Luger runs down and leaps into the ring to then get out of the ring to yeah. go after Vince Russo. Yes, right. So a woman has been kidnapped. She's been brought forth before the world as a kidnapping victim. Her boyfriend has come to rescue her. The kidnappers have flew through the crowd. The boyfriend has given chase. So anyway, <laughs> and they continue with their promo like nothing happened. <laughs> I was so pissed. I was so pissed off at this. For tonight, Eric Bischoff books David Arquette against Tank Abbott. Paige says that match won't happen. and He and Tank are going back and forth here. A brawl breaks out. Eventually, Tank challenges Paige and says, if you win, fine, no match for Arquette. But if I beat you, I get a match with David Arquette. You know what? It's going to be an unpopular take. But aside from the Luger stuff, which was an angle in the middle of an angle, which pissed me off, I actually like this segment because David Arquette and DDP have screwed the heels. And David Arquette won the WCW World Heavyweight Championship from Jeff Jarrett, and the heels are outraged. So Arquette just wants to get rid of this fucking belt because he's not a wrestler. No. And he doesn't deserve it. He admittedly says, I don't deserve it. I just want to get rid of this thing and go back and make my movie. The heels are like, no, no, fuck you. You're in this fucking match now. Because they want to get their hands on the guy. And then they sign him to a match with Tank Abbott, the shooter, because he's going to kill David Arquette. And then when DDP steps up, they announce these stipulations where Tank says, I'll face you, Paige. And if you beat me, this guy's free. If I beat you, he'll die tonight was basically what he said. He actually did say that, yeah. Yeah. So this all made sense, and I liked it. If you, if you take out the Luger Liz Russo stuff, that was very dumb. Incredible. The rest dumb. of it, I liked it. It made sense. So last time we saw Lex, as I was just talking about, he was within arm's reach of Liz and the security guys, and had to pretend he couldn't grab them. Mm-hmm. After the break, Lex is backstage looking for them. How did they lose him? Where did they go? What's happening? Back at the gym. Stasiak is shooting baskets, talking about his abs, and <laughs> he shoots a basket and it goes in, talks about his abs. He shoots a basket. He gets a shooter's roll, man. Mm-hmm. It hits rim. It hits glass. It's going back and forth, and it just barely teeters in. And of course, he's like, I knew it all the time. And he goes to shoot a third one, and the cameraman zooms in really tight on Sean. Just in case. Just in case. He's got to shoot 6,000 baskets. Whatever it was. 5,000 some, yeah. In two hours. Yeah. No, that's all I even thought about that part. <laughs> that's the key. <laughs> that's a lot. Of- Especially since he has to jibber jabber in the middle of every single one of them, the woman that's there. Somebody figure out how many baskets per minute that is. Oh, God. So Eric Bischoff is in his office with Hugh Morris. He's mad at Hugh for something. And he says, Hugh, tonight you will face Scott Steiner and Jeff Jarrett in a three way match. And if any of your misfits in action of interfere, they'll be fired. You're what now? This, when did this? What? This must have happened on Thunder. 
That's the only Quickly. place. <laughs> there was no tease to it. There was no build to it. There's, there are there are now misfits in action. By my calculations, he would have to shoot approximately 40 <laughs> Free baskets That's it. per minute. That's a lot. Two straight wow. hours. Yeah. Yeah. No time for talking. Well, he, for sure. he he would have had to make up for a lot of last time after these promos too. So actually, I would I would suspect that he probably shot about uh, two hundred baskets by the time that Mister Perfect showed up. Yeah. Oh, spoiler, dude. So anyway, yeah, the, the Misfits in Action are a thing now. Here is where I wrote: I hate this show. What Wall versus Horace? No, even before that, <laughs> the humorous thing with the Misfits in Action, just with no explanation. Now they are a thing. The Wall versus Humorous. In the second match on the show. In the second match on the show. It's been a half hour. In a tables match. Yes. The Wall versus Horace in a tables match. Why is The Wall fighting Horace? Why is The Wall fighting Horace in a tables match? Why is there a tables match on Nitro? What's going on? Where has Horace Hogan been? Where has Horace Hogan been? Who gives a shit about all these questions? Let's talk about the match. The match was horrible. I have no idea who won. Wait, Wall won, right? Yeah. I don't even know how. But I wrote Wall Wins. Wall Wins, yeah. It's literally all I wrote. Okay, he went to a table. That's so right, he won. Sure. Hogan hits the ring. He starts beating up Kidman in the wall. Mike Awesome hits the ring. Hogan is brawling with everybody. And finally, Awesome has to put him through this table. Mm-hmm. Awesome normally does the top rope powerbomb. Hogan ain't taking no fucking top rope powerbomb. <laughs> Thank God, actually. So Hogan gets on the middle rope. And Mike Awesome does a sunset flip powerbomb, putting Hulk Hogan through a fucking table. Yeah. Wow! Yes, yeah. that's pretty impressive. Also, Mrs. Hancock was out here scouting. Yeah, Mrs. Hancock. She, her gimmick here is like what Lacey was doing before Mania. She just comes out for no reason, then nothing happens. Right. Oh, and by the way, the moment that Hulk Hogan gets power bombed through a table, yes, back, awesome to the cemetery, to the back. Yep, to the very back. There was a lot of this tonight. So Vampiro's in a graveyard now. This is his dream. This is his home. Asks Sting to come and play, and says. Curiosity killed the scorpion. That's not how that goes. I don't think scorpions are capable of curiosity, actually. <laughs> Russo drags Liz to the ring, calls out Lex, threatens to rack his ass, drags her back to the back. <laughs> yep. Lex still can't find him? Nah. Tough guy, Vince Russo. <laughs> Here's what I wrote here. Jared's back, and I have no idea why. Does he have a match now? What's going on? Yeah, because remember, Bischoff right. signed Hugh Morris to All the... right, the three-way. Now, here's what I can't figure out. Scott Steiner's been a fucking baby face now for three weeks. This doesn't even this doesn't even compute in my mind. <laughs> has How he? is he a baby face? He, there was the one show where he challenged Jarrett. He's a fucking yeah. baby face here too. Well, kinda, because he's still he's still working with Jarrett and Double Team Hugh. Yeah, but then they turn on each other. Yes, because nobody can have friends in WCW. Yes, Wait a minute. this Scott Steiner baby face ripping up some signs of fans. And Fuck, I don't rating them. All I know is him and Jarrett are feuding, and Jarrett absolutely is a top heel. That's true. Okay, that I can confirm. Steiner puts Steiner's a dumbass. Recliner. He keeps turning his back, and Jarrett goes for pins, and Steiner turns around and goes, "Hey, and keep going." So yeah, Steiner hooks a recliner, and Jarrett hits him with a guitar. Jarrett leaves. That's how much the match meant to him. Yeah. And Hugh gets the pin on Scott. And those misfits in action hit the ring, and it's to the graveyard. Because it's very important to show Sting looking for Vampiro in the dark before we go to break. No, what it is, Vinny, is very important to not get anything over. Well, which they're successfully doing on this show. They did show a here. fine job of that. Bischoff fires the misfits in action. This is the very first Nitro we've ever seen the misfits <laughs> in action, and they've already been fired. Yes. Not even a fucking week. No. That's not even the least of our worries, by the way. Four days. Russo preps for his match backstage. And we get Sting and Vampiro in in what I guess was the graveyard match. Did you see it? I didn't see any of it. Now, I shot shit like this when I was in high school. Horror (laughs) movies. It's all better than this. I know, Brian, you're not big on pop culture. And uh, I'm honestly not that much either. I don't. I do not watch Game of Thrones, but I am aware of it, and I'm aware there's a huge episode this weekend that some people thought was a bad episode because it was shot in a very dark manner. Mm. And even before the show aired, I got I saw tweets from people saying, "Everyone, turn your brightness way up." I guess they knew it was going to happen. So some people loved the show. Some people thought it was too dark. It was controversial. Point being, I know where they got that idea. Oh fuck! They didn't were watching. They the watched show. the graveyard match. Oh fuck off! In May of of 2000, and said, "Hey." Here's a fight in the dark where we can't fucking see. Let's make a whole TV show about it. I know enough about Game of Thrones to know that those people were not watching fucking Nitro. 
It's like he's taking me seriously. I know. Is this creepy or what? Asks Tony. So they're doing... No! It's not creepy. No, it's cartoon. It's two guys playing in the fucking dark. It is literally... There's a point where Vampiro jumps him, and you, like, see Vampiro raise his arms overhead, and as he swings down, it's pure blackness. I couldn't see what he was doing or who he was hitting. This goes on for a while. They Vamp brawl, hits him with a shovel. Yeah, they brawl over what we are told is an open grave, but I can't see it. The fighting stops. Vampiro takes the time to tear a headstone from the earth. I don't want to encourage vandalism, but if you're ever at a gravestone, grave a cemetery, and you see a hem, uh, headstone, try to lift it. Let me know how that goes. Well, I pretended like he was heavy. Vampiro tears it out of He's the He's very strong. Sting looks at this man holding a tombstone and says, Who are you? And Vampiro says, I'm the monster you should have been. And Vampiro breaks the tombstone over Sting's head. No. He swings the tombstone... And the tombstone explodes. Like it was made of salt. Like the Death Star. Shards of shit go flying. Thanos snapped his fingers and the tombstone went... It did not break in half. It burst. Spoiler alert. Dude. It burst into fragments. <laughs> and fucking Sting falls into this grave. Mm -hmm. And these goddamn announcers are explaining to me, a grown-ass man, that Sting may be dead. <laughs> they explain to me that, well, the tombstone broke <laughs> so clearly his head must have been smashed to bits that's what they said it, smashed to bits it should have been yes his fucking head was smashed to bits he fell into an open grave they're telling us that he must be dead okay mm -hmm. it's pretty fucking serious dead he's dead yeah that's serious yeah. so they go to leave and all of a sudden they zoom in on pitch black they scream what is that <laughs> We can't fucking see what it is. Nope. And they're on these tiny little black and white monitors, so they can't see. But they know it stings hand. And so they scream, and I quote, He's alive! Are you kidding me? What an all-time horrible segment. But Vinny, guess what? It gets worse. Okay. What do you mean, okay? I, I, I know. I'm saying okay, let's move on and get to it. I'm not, I'm not, that was not an okay of disagreement. You better not be. <laughs> it gets way worse than this. And I thought this was as bad as it could get. Lex Luger's warming up backstage. Dallas Page versus Tank Abbott. Even these fucking people know. Lock the guy's friends in a room. Otherwise, why don't his friends come out? Well, they locked Canyon and Arquette in their room. Yes. Grave concern that Arquette might help DDP beat Tank Abbott. You never know. So... <laughs> This is actually for what it was, 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 was very good. Paige is angry, so he gets in a brawl with Tank Abbott. This is a dumb idea because Tank hits really fucking hard. <laughs> so Paige goes down. They tease a knockout finished. Tank's walking to the back, but Paige, as dumb as he is, is a hero and fights to his feet. The first guy to fight to his feet after being almost knocked out by, by Do Tank. I need to tell you how irate Goldberg was when he watched this on television? <laughs> Because they were building up Tank Abbott for Goldberg. <sighs> they just killed his finish right here. Oh, they did. They did. Regardless, uh, Tank goes back to the ring. The match continues. Jarrett attacks Paige. Tank wins by knockout. He hits him with a bottle. This fucking, oh, that's... This fucking bottle. I yes. forgot about this segment. So they're brawling on the floor. Yes. And there's the... Uh, Jarrett's got like a baseball hat on, right? It's not like a disguise. Do you have a, do you have a mask on? I can't remember there's so much bullshit going on. Towards the crowd. Yes. All you need to know is he hit him with a He hits bottle. him. He hits him. And I say, okay, he hit him. And then we are told, was that a bottle? I think he hit him with a bottle. And I think on replay, you could see it. But there's a long discussion about whether or not whether it was a bottle. Because yes. you couldn't even tell what he hit him with. Now, the camera work was horrible. I was clued up uh, a while back. And it said, watch the front row after the bottle gets swung. There was people pawing at their face. <laughs> One guy is, is like he's got his oh, he's got his fingers in his eyes and and he's rubbing his eyes. It, uh, oh my gosh! So what we discovered here is that nitro is so bad it will literally strike you blind. <laughs> and by the way, he fell down on the ground and the referee stopped the match. So yes. I guess it was false count anywhere. Apparently, knockouts count anywhere. Didn't count him out. They cut backstage where Eric Bischoff has no reaction. He had to have been stoned. The crowd was so desperately turning on the show at this point. Well. David Arquette has a panic attack. He has to fight Tank Abbott now. Dallas Page is put on a gurney, loaded into an ambulance. He's being taken to the emergency room. We cut backstage where Hogan, Hulk Hogan 
the biggest star in the company, and Mike Awesome are brawling. It's a heck of a brawl, and then it's to the ring. Yeah. We must cut away from this brawl to show what's happening in the ring because Billy Kidman's cutting a promo. Was this ever a horrible promo or what? Has he ever cut a good promo? No. Has he ever cut a promo that was better than horrible? He They're horrible every week. Calls the old guys washed up pieces of trash. This kid is looking for some action, he says, as he's cutting this, this ungodly terrible promo. I was working mm -hmm. so hard to pay attention to this. Nash shows up backstage. Terry Taylor also a washed up piece of trash, I guess, because he says, Nash, you should go kick this kid's ass. What he actually well, said was, hey, you're late. And Nash replies, that's my gimmick. I'm always late. Then <laughs> Rooster says, this guy's coming out washed up pieces of trash like you. And Nash goes, where's the ring? <laughs> so Nash goes down to the ring and he fucking makes a fool out of Kidman, just beats him like a pinball. Just embarrassing. And who should run down... To attack Kevin Nash, but Conan and Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At which point Scott Hudson screams, they don't even work for us. What? What? Did I miss a fucking angle where Rey Mysterio and Conan no longer work for WCW? I believe, and you would know this better than I as the guy who wrote the book on it, but... As I believe, they asked for their releases along with the Radicals. They didn't get them. And had, but they had not been seen since. Well, neither did Shane Douglas. But no one knew that watching the fucking show. But now you can paint you, you can paint them as, as outsiders. You can, you can call it an invasion. But nobody knew that watching the show is my fucking point. No well, viewer knew that they asked for their fucking release and weren't granted. No, they, they haven't been seen in two months or whatever it's been. More than that, actually. Dude. So. Did you or did you not, Vinny, say, where has Horace been? I did say that. Okay, where have they been? I don't know, but who fucking said that they didn't work for WCW anymore? I don't know. Nobody it's fucking either. ridiculous. And Ray can barely walk. Mm -hmm. Nash can't fucking walk. No. No. And they all have to do a chase scene. Yes. Nash had to do a walk-in. Ray runs backstage, and as he's looking for Nash, he trips over a okay. goddamn cord and fucking nearly breaks his leg again. Are you... I think he faked this to give no. an excuse for Nash catching up. It nope. was legitimate. He legit tripped over he this thing. He okay. legit tripped over because he's looking the wrong way. I see. Nash is trying to run. He can't even walk. No. He's fucking limping all over the place, dragging his leg behind him. This was so bad. Was this so important that you had to bring Ray and Nash back to run? I'll tell you. No, it was not that important. Well, he didn't even get to the end yet. Conan it jumps in the driver's seat of a truck. Oh, God. Billy Kidman jumps in the passenger seat of a truck. Ray Ray jumps in the back of the truck, and they go to drive away. This was so WCW. The pickup truck dies, and the truck, the vehicle, the internal combustion engine cannot escape the speed of Kevin Nash. And Nash, who's not supposed to catch them, he like walks up to the car that's there, because he's supposed to jump in the car and drive after them, and he opens the door, and he looks and realizes... Fuck, Ray's right here. And he slams the door and starts throwing punches at Ray, and they go to break right away. Actually, the car didn't die. As they were going up the ramp, there was a car in the way. They tried to swerve around, and another car was coming the other way <laughs> because nobody had the sense to clear the area so they could actually film. So they go to break, and I guess during the break, they realize how shitty this looked. I thought, we, we can't just leave it like that. We got to do something after the break. So after the break, like Ray's down on the ground and Conan's down in the truck and Nash is hitting everything with a crowbar and smashing windows or whatever. Swell. Oh, by the way, also, uh, when Nash and Rooster were having the conversation backstage, we could still hear Kimmin's promo over them. And somewhere in there, Kimmin promised to beat up Linda Hogan. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Vince Rosso versus Lex Luger. Russo cuts a promo wherein he promises, I will interfere at Slamboree and I will kick Ric Flair's ass. Okay. Says, if Lex beats him tonight, he will turn over the key to Elizabeth. He will stop kidnapping her. Immediately, Buff and Shane are brawling with Lex and Flair. Lex Luger is maced. He is handcuffed. They destroy his testicles. And Vince Russo the on-screen, in-script, stupidest character in the history of pro wrestling hands a baseball bat to Miss Elizabeth and says, finish him. Why? 
Not for a single second, not for one single frame of screen time, has Liz given any indication that she will do what uh, Russo says that she's on his side. So Liz, who is not an idiot, hits Russo with a baseball bat and runs away. Wait, wait, wait. She ran away? How'd she run away? Well, she hit him with the bat and he dropped the leash. Yeah. He was just holding it? Yes. Also oh, my down, fucking so. God. Yes. What an idiot. So he even she, handcuffed it to himself? No. It was a leash and she ran away. So she's running away and Shane's calling her a whore. Chronic appears. This is still one segment. Security is out there. Chronic starts beating up security guards and beating up Shane and beating up Buff. There are police officers in the ring. The fight continues. Chronic is press slamming security guards around. And they turn around and Brian Adams and Brian Clark being the second and third person in this one segment in two separate incidents to get maced. I'm so bored. It's a horrible show. <laughs> it is beyond We are the, the end is in sight. It is. We were like three quarters of the way through. I was talking about Arquette. He's freaking out the canyon. Yep. Then Nash is destroying a car with a crowbar. Yep. So there, Conan is in the car. Or at least there's a body in there. <laughs> yeah. And Nash is hitting the windows and fucking glass. And don't even tell me this fucking sugar glass, you assholes. Yep. Fucking glass is flying everywhere. Yep. He's smashing the windows. He's smashing the top of the fucking truck. This company lost $62 million. <laughs> Did we need to destroy a goddamn truck for this stupid angle? We did not. The answer is no, we didn't. It produced zero dollars in revenue, I can tell you but that. But they, they destroyed it. And they, they put Nash's eyes and and face and beautiful up mane in danger. And Conan's body in that fucking car in danger. After he had to fucking run on a bad knee and Ray had to run on a fucking bad knee. This is bullshit. I'm sick of this show. Then fucking Vampiro comes out. Starts cutting a promo on Sting. The lights go out, and I, I swear to God, this is my thought process. The lights go out, and I thought, there's no way. There's no way Sting is back tonight. <laughs> there's no way. Hmm. The fucking lights go out, and I'm thinking this, and all of a sudden, near the Titan Tron, or whatever they fucking call it, the Nitro Tron, there's a fucking crow. Mm-hmm. Would you have known this if they had not told you? There's a camera on the, on the screen. No, of course you wouldn't have. They're showing like the entire big giant Titantron from ground level. Yes. And at the bottom 10% of the screen, yeah, there's a bird. Okay, but the point is, there's a fucking bird on the Titantron. Yes. And I thought, okay, so the story is that they brawled in a stupid cemetery, and Vampiro broke a stupid headstone over his stupid head, and he fell into a stupid hole. Right. Okay. They said he was stupid dead. Sure. The stupid angle. Okay. So now Vampiro comes out, but the lights go out and a goddamn crow shows up. That's right. Fine. Okay. Yes. Fine. All right. This is not my wrestling, but fine. Next week, the crow can be in the aisle. Sure. Then the next week, the crow can be at ringside. Mm -hmm. The week after that, the crow can be on the fucking ring post. And then the week after that, it's fucking sting. Yeah. Build to it. They show this fucking bird. Mm hmm. And, like, Vampire is distracted by a bird. Yeah. A, How did a black bird, bird yeah. on a black screen in a black building. You can see this fucking bird. And was He's got night vision. Was the cemetery across the street? How did he so, get back so quick? The fucking point of this is, all of a sudden, falling from the goddamn heavens at mock speed <laughs> is Sting. Yes. He fucking nearly breaks his legs for the third goddamn yes. week in a row, landing so hard on the fucking ground. He's back. He's fine. Yep. And you know what? <laughs> Something else you neglected to mention, which makes me even more mad. Okay? I'm listening. Last week on this fucking show, Sting's in the middle of the ring, and blood drops from the fucking ceiling and covers him. He's covered in blood. That was it. Right. Yes. Okay. okay? Yes, yes, yes. So, you neglected to mention, Vinny, okay. when they showed the clips from Thunder, yeah. Sting's running wild covered in blood. 48 hours later. There was not another bloodbath on no. Thunder. No. This fucking guy, apparently... Got covered in blood, didn't take a shower Monday night. No. Didn't change clothes. Got in his goddamn rental car. Sure. Uh, I mean, I presume, I mean, maybe they, it was a driving distance. It's two days But later. I mean, if he had to get on a goddamn airplane, he went through <laughs> fucking customs, uh, pre-2001, Yeah. covered in fucking blood head to toe. Yeah. That didn't he raise, didn't shower on Tuesday. That nope. didn't raise an eyebrow. He didn't shower on Wednesday. No. 
he he got into the building and he ran wild covered in blood. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, he got hit with a goddamn tombstone yep. that cracked his skull and left him for dead, as we're told. Smashing he the falls bits. into a fucking hole in the ground. He's a dead man. Right. He comes back here not even not even two hours later. He didn't oh, less than an hour. Not even raw in Warzone. Like he came back on another fucking show. Yeah. No. Not even an hour. This fucking guy comes back. And not only is he running wild, he ain't got a fucking scratch on him. No, he's fine. He's not bleeding. No. He's not got... He's not even his paints fucked up. No. <laughs> there was no dirt on him. We watched that Ric Flair match where Ric Flair dropped a knee on him and took the fucking paint off his face. Yeah. This guy got in with a fucking tombstone, <laughs> and he comes back in here, not a scratch on him. And he beats the shit out of Vampiro and lays him out. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's Are you happened. fucking kidding me? That's what happened. And then this dude returns from the fucking dead. He beats up Vampiro, but we got to cut away because Sean Stasiak is sinking hoops. <laughs> that is, Fuck you. That's all fact. That's One of the all, worst shows I've ever seen in my goddamn fact. life. By the way, before the Vampiro promo, Ric Flair and Lex Luger and Chronic were all arrested. Yes. Oh, and then after Stasiak is shooting hoops, we go backstage and guess what we see? Russo is yelling at Liz. Wait, wait, who? Russo has got Liz. She ran off. So you, I, now they're together in a room. I watched her flee. Yeah, she, I did too. She was free and clear. She ran backstage, and then instead of running to a car or running out of the building, she ran to a locker room. No, Vinny. She ran back to his locker room. <laughs> Remember earlier when I said Liz wasn't wasn't stupid? My bad. Liz, this, this show, Miss Elizabeth this on show. the show was as dumb as Vince Russo on the show. No so, one's dumber than Vince Russo. I said as dumb. This sh- no, right. he's dumber than she is. This show proves it. Regardless, I have no sympathy for this Liz character being kidnapped. She deserves to be kidnapped. She needs to be kidnapped. Someone can watch over her. Russo confronts her. She slaps him. She laid into him too. Good. Tank Abbott versus David Arquette. They got fucking... Every time they go to Bischoff and his crew watch them backstage, he's just silent and catatonic. He's as bored of the show as everyone else is. They're doing shit. Paige drives up in an ambulance. Dallas Page also no-sells the knockout from the bottle and the knockout from the punch. Drives the ambulance back to the building. Uh, there's music playing. Bischoff gives... Bischoff gives Jarrett some orders. And as Bischoff is giving Jarrett orders, we miss Paige hitting Tank Abbott with a diamond cutter. Hey, can we mention that DDP, when he returns, David Arquette's still in the ring with Tank Abbott. Tank Abbott gives him a body slam, and the announcers alert us that his life is in the balance. His life is in the balance. I actually can believe that Tank Abbott killed David Arquette with a body slam. Sting got hit with a fucking Uh, tombstone, and he's fine. And Arquette's life is in the balance because he got body slammed. Point Point taken. I hate this show. Point taken. So Arquette's on top. The ref counts three, and Arquette wins. Tank took a heck of a bump for the diamond cutter. I totally forgot that Arquette had a win over Tank Abbott. Until <laughs> right now. Jesus Christ almighty. Yes. You're Goldberg, okay? <laughs> These assholes wanted you to punch a hole through a fucking limo window, and you scratched up your fucking arm, and you tore tendons, and you literally almost had to retire. And you go home, and you haven't been seen, and they're building up Tank Abbott for you to to return to. Because you're a shooter, and he's a shooter. And the two of you are going to go out there and beat the shit out of each other in a big fucking match. You're sitting there watching on television, and fucking Tank Abbott punches out DDT, or DDP, who no-sells his punch. And then later in the show, Tank Abbott is pinned by David fucking Arquette. Correct. <laughs> I'm done. We go to break. We come back. Scott Steiner, during the break, attacks Jeff Jarrett. I guess it's a baby face now, I suppose. Knocked him out. Back in the gymnasium, Sean Stasiak is one shot away from the world record. If he makes one more basket, he sets the record for consecutive free throws. And he's about to shoot when Kurt Hennig lays him out from behind. This counts as breaking the streak, and he gets no record. Should have been a DQ. He should have gotten to stand up and do another shot. Yes. So, yes. I mean, it gets lost in the shuffle of all the dumb bullshit in the show, but it's just dumb. In the main event, Hulk Hogan versus Mike Awesome. Okay, listen to me. In case this ends up on YouTube, I'm going to preemptively respond 
to the brain dead shitheads that are going to invariably say the following. Last week on this show, Brian said that Mike Awesome is the guy who should have beaten Hulk Hogan. Now, Mike Awesome beats Hulk Hogan and Brian's mad. He's an idiot. No, you're a fucking idiot. Well, they are. If fucking Hulk Hogan is going to lose to somebody, then yes, they should have built up Mike Awesome and had Mike Awesome beat Hulk Hogan. I said that, okay? If Billy Kidman, <laughs> Billy fucking Kidman, has beaten Hulk Hogan two times, then the last thing that we need to do is have Hulk Hogan lose a third time to Mike Awesome in a match on this show. They shouldn't have booked this match. Hulk no. Hogan has been beaten now three times randomly in nothing happening matches. Like, what? This was so stupid. If they would have just waited and Billy Kidman never beat Hulk Hogan... Mm -hmm. And Hulk Hogan went on a tear, and Mike Awesome went on a tear, and then you put this fucking match on pay-per-view, and without outside interference, Mike Awesome put Hulk Hogan through a table and pinned him, now you got something. Instead, this Hulk Hogan is a loser, this fucking geek lost to Billy Kidman twice, this loser goes in with Mike Awesome, there's a bunch of bullshit, and Mike Awesome beats Hulk Hogan after Kidman waffles Hulk Hogan with a chair. This didn't help Mike Awesome. This didn't help Billy Kidman. This didn't help Hulk Hogan. This hurt everybody. Hulk Hogan, three times, not only beaten, beaten badly and bloody. Every time. He's bleeding every week now. Yeah, he's Dusty Rhodes. Uh, I'm going to read uh, two sentences from my notes here, Brian. Please. They had a really good brawl in the main event. If this company had any kind of clue, Awesome Hogan would have been a great main event program. Hmm. Basically confirming what you just said. Well, they don't have a clue. They do not have a clue. They thought everyone could beat Hulk Hogan, and they'll all get over. Not only that, it's free money. Only <laughs> it's a perpetual motion machine. <laughs> but we'll have Mike Awesome beat him on the paper or the TV show to set up Kidman getting the match of the pay per view. Right? Yes. Every time Kidman and Hogan are in the ring together, it sucks. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. Every time Awesome and Hogan are together, it's great. Yes. Mike Awesome works so good with Hulk Hogan, but it's too late. It is too late. They've damaged Hogan. If already. he had showed up. As the undefeated reigning champion from another promotion. Yes. And he starts laying waste to everybody. Yes. And he, he can outfly the cruiserweights. Yes. He can outbrawl the hardcore dudes. Yes. He can power the, the giants around. Indeed. He's an unstoppable threat. He puts Hogan through a table, and then you do Mike Awesome versus Hogan on pay-per-view. Oh my god, that would have ruled. But no, we got zero of that because these people are fucking stupid. So And by the way, did they advertise this match at all on this show? I don't even know. Do you remember? I don't remember. I don't remember. I certainly can't say they did. I don't did. think they did. I think they just... They were going to do Mike Awesome Hulk Hogan unannounced at the end of Nitro. Yeah. So Awesome wins to set up Kidman Hogan on Sunday. Hogan gets up. He's attacking with chairs. A fan in a sting mask hits the ring. The announcer has no clue. Do you want to know the best part about this, Vinny? <laughs> yes. It wasn't a fan. It was a what? plant. It okay. was a plant. I watched it like six times trying to determine. They they I, thought it would be cool, mm -hmm. and uh, it's stupid. How, how? Why? It makes it seem like the product's hot. I guess to entice fans in other cities to also run in? That's what happens. Okay. <laughs> That's what happens every time a promotion does this. So, I was on the fence. I decided, after watching it several times, that it was probably a legit fan. But regardless, the fan's in the ring, he's in a sting mask, Hogan sees him, and the front fan runs out of the ring, and then the blood pours from the ceiling and lays Hogan out. And all I was thinking was, it would have been so much better if that fan had been covered in blood, too. Yes. So the blood lays out Hogan, they beat him up, the show ends. One of the all-time worst episodes of Nitro I've ever seen in my entire life. The finish is, Vinny. Let's do this and get out of here. Let's do this and get out of here. Would you shut up? The finishes on this miserable, awful show were... Some kind of stupid fucking bullshit in a match with a goddamn mascot. Win after interference in a tables match. Pin in a three-way after one dude hit another with a guitar. Then left. Knockout interfer after interference by a guy who may or may not have used a weapon. No contest due to security and mace and handcuffs and chronics and cops and more mace. Pin after interference. Pin after interference and chair shot. That's it. What that was shit. bad. That was horrible. Well, there you go, everybody. Can they top it next week? Ah!
<laughs> Dude, think about this video. Any more beer. At least this isn't that week where we watched it on Sunday and had to watch it again on Tuesday. That was a rough week. At least we got six days <laughs> yeah, turn around. to reprogram ourselves. Yes. All right, everybody. That's it. We're out of time. All sorts of great stuff up on the front page if you want to check it out. My match with the Jungle Boys up on my Twitter at Brian Alvarez. Head up there and check that out. Granny's already seen it. Her review is is being prepared for Thursday as we speak. Hopefully it's better than a review of the Orange Cassidy match. Mm. We'll have to see. But check it out, everybody, and that is it. We will talk to you again after a while. Good night. Adios.